Okay, so today we're going to review for our geometry exam. Notice this is the unit two review for transformations. And this questions were asked to rotate triangle EFG 180 degrees around O. This is interesting because I've already started with you with the construction marks. You know that a rotation is gonna move in a circle. So 180 degrees simply means, well, if I have G, where would G prime be? That means that the angle that I form between G, O, and G prime has to be 180 degrees. And we know that an angle of 180 degrees is a straight angle. So this means that G prime is going to be right there. Okay, here's G prime. Well, okay. Now, where is E prime? Okay, well, here is E and here is O. That means that O prime, E prime has to land on this circle right here. Here's where 180 degree lands. Here's E prime and finally F prime. Similarly, it's moving around O. So if I'm moving 180 degrees, I have to move 180 degrees, half of circle. Here is going to be F prime. And now connecting those two, okay? And I will produce a triangle that is congruent to the original pre-image. Whoops. Okay, there's my triangle, 180 degrees. Now, for this question, we're asked to find B prime following the same rule we used to find A prime. Okay, well, how did I find A prime? Well, I moved how many units in the up direction and how many units in the right direction. I know I moved, traced the slope pretty much. One, two, three. So three units up and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so well, I moved six X plus six because I moved to the right and then I moved Y plus three. So that's the rule. Okay, well, apply the same rule to B in order to find B prime. Six units up, one, two, six units to the right, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, and three units up. One, two, three. Here is B prime. And now when I connect A prime to B prime, I should end up with a segment that's going to be parallel, okay? Because all I did was translate. I translated along this vector right here. That's the vector. Or you can say translate along this vector, okay? In this question, this is pretty simple, okay? We're going to reflect over B. Each point here, we're going to reflect. A reflection of B over the y-axis. Where was B? B is right here, and I need to reflect it over the y-axis. This is the y-axis. So let's reflect. Well, I know the distance here needs to be the same distance on the other side. On this side, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. That means I need to go to this side, 4 as well, to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here is B prime. And now I just have to state the coordinates there. Well, that coordinate point is negative 4. Here's the negative 4. And how much did I go upwards? Well, positive 4. So negative 4, comma 4. Okay? Same thing here. A reflection of E over the x-axis. Here's E, and here's the x-axis, okay? I need to reflect. So, one, two, here's the x-axis, and now let's 
move up two more one two here is going to be e prime okay so here's e prime and i go negative three comma two so this review is to help you not just to simply copy if you're just copying then you're not going to understand so try it on your own first before viewing the video here's the line x equals 2 well x equals 2 is this line it's a vertical line through the point when x is 2 which point do i need to translate or reflect reflect point c over the line x equals 2 here is point C. It actually lies on the line. Well, that means that there is no distance between the point C and the line. Well, that means that C prime will also not have a distance between C prime and the line of reflection. That means that this point right here, when I reflect it, it's going to land right there. There's nowhere for it to move. So this point becomes negative uh, positive 2, negative 2. Okay? And you guys can do the other two. Now, this question we've done before. In the diagram below, triangle ABC and triangle XYZ are graphed. Use the property of rigid motions to explain why the two are congruent. Why is triangle ABC congruent to triangle XYZ using the property of rigid motions? Well, I know what this word means. It means it's a transformation that preserves size and shape. Okay, well, I think here, did, was there a transformation that preserved size and shape? Did the shape change? No, it didn't. That means that there has to be a rigid motion that maps ABC to triangle XYZ. And notice that you can tell where A maps to. A is going to map to X. How do you know that? Well, look at the letters. The corresponding letters are actually congruent. So A maps to X, B maps to Y, and C maps to Z. Now, how do I explain this? Well, I say since the triangles are the same size and now go back to the definition go back to the definition of rigid motions go back to the definition of congruence since the triangles are the same size then there exists a sequence right of rigid motions that maps triangle ABC to triangle XYZ. And then you can name the actual rigid motions that do this. Well, what was the rigid motion that took this triangle to this triangle? I'll let you figure that out. In this question, we're asked to find the image of the origin under a certain translation is the point 2, negative 6. The image point is negative 3, negative 2. Under the same translation is the point. Okay, well, what are we doing here? What is this? So the image, the image of the origin so the origin is the point zero comma zero under a certain trans. So we went from this point. We went from this point to this point, a prime. Okay, let's call it a prime. So how did I go from a to a prime? Okay, and now they're saying, okay, well, the image of the point. So this is called, let's call it B. And now we're asked to find B prime under the same translation rule. Well, okay, I say, well, from 0 to 2, I moved 2 in the x direction. So I moved x plus 2. Okay, well, what happened to y? 
where it seems that y moved down six units from zero to six. So I say y minus six. That is the coordinate rule. Okay, well, I got to apply the same rule to b in order to find b prime. x is negative three, so I say negative three plus two comma y is negative two. Negative two minus six. Negative three, my, negative three plus two is negative one, and negative two minus six is negative eight. So there you go. Okay. So in this question, we're given three points, A, B, and C. And we need to find triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Well, it says that this was after a rotation about A. We're supposed to find B prime given C prime. Okay, well, we can see that from A to, well, from C to C prime, what was the rule here? What was the rule that happened after this rotation? Well, it seems like, well, the A is here and it used to be here. And the 3 is here, and it used to be here, and now it's negative. Well, let's apply that same rule. Let's see. Well, all that I see here is that the coordinates switched and the y got negated. So if I have a point x, y, the rule seems to be to switch them. So I'm going to put y, and the x comes on this side, but not just x. It's going to be negative x as well. So let's apply that rule to B so that we can find B prime. Well, B says the point is 5 comma 4. Applying the rule, we, use, we should get 4, negative 5. So B prime is 4, negative 5. Okay? This piece you guys can do on your own. I'll do one for you. So the pre-image of B after reflection over line G, okay? Well, where is line G first? Here is G, and I'm supposed to refine the pre-image of B. That means that B is the image. Where is the pre-image? How did I get to B reflecting over G? Well, that means I had to have reflected A to get to B. So this means that this is the pre.